I'm Mimi, I'm a digital illustrator running my own small art business and today I want to share with you all my tips for getting started selling your first art commissions. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that later. Selling custom commissioned illustrations was the first way that I started making money from my art and I know that it's the same for a lot of other artists as well. So if you're thinking you'd like to start taking your art from a hobby to a business or side income, then I think that commissions are a great place to start. A commission is a custom piece of art personalized for a customer or professional client. And this video is going to focus on getting small scale commissions like portraits of people or pets. So how do you get your first commissions? Well, the basic formula is that you need an art style of some kind, which is the creative part, a way for people to see your art style, like on a social media platform, which is the marketing part, and a way for them to purchase a commission from you, which is the financial part. But we need to go a little deeper than that. So grab a notepad and a coffee because I've got a whole lot of info for you today. Just keep in mind that nothing I share is financial or legal advice. I'm just a girl who makes art and has some tips. So today I've got tips on working on the creative skills, building an audience, creating specific examples of your commissions, deciding how much to charge, getting set up to receive money, spreading the word and marketing, and completing orders. So first let's work on the creative skills if you haven't already. If you don't think your art skills are strong enough yet, or you don't think you have an art style, then that's okay because those can both be improved with practice and everyone starts somewhere. Practice as much as you can and focus on improving your skills and you will make progress. Take classes on drawing things like characters and pets if those are the commissions you're going to offer and then put those skills into practice by drawing real subjects like people you know or your friend's pets. Although I don't think you need to have a set art style to enjoy being an artist, I do think it helps if you're selling something like commissions because your audience will want to know what style their illustration will be in before they buy it. Now we need to build an audience. So while we're doing all this practice, share your journey and build a social media audience at the same time because it takes a lot of time to build. It's totally up to you where you build your audience, but you will need people to see your art somewhere. And I think the easiest way to do that these days is on a social media or content sharing platform like Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. If you're watching this video, then it's quite likely that you've already been building an audience and creating art for a little while. But if you haven't, then now is a really good time to get started. Show some specific examples of your commissions. So you've been practicing your art style and you've been building an audience. Now we need to show your audience some examples of the kinds of commissions you're going to offer if you haven't already done so. It's worth thinking about your audience here and what they would want to commission from you and create examples of those to put in your social media feeds. If your audience is young people who like social media and a cute aesthetic, then maybe you'll want to draw cute portraits that can be used as social media profile pictures. If they're new mums, then maybe create some portraits of mums with babies or birth announcement art. If they're into witchy aesthetics, maybe you'll create some witchy portraits that can be customized. You want to make things that make your audience go, ooh, I want one of those. And that's basically sales in a nutshell. To help with that, now is a good time for me to mention this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that you've probably already heard of because they have thousands of classes on all sorts of creative skills, including drawing portraits, which is perfect for commissions. I just enjoyed the fun with faces, create a stylized digital portrait class by Charlie Clements, which was such great fun and a really valuable class if you're wanting to explore your portrait style. I really like how playful her style is and the whole class was really calm and informative, which is right up my alley. She takes us through her whole process from sketch to colored illustration and has some nice procreate tips in there as well. Skillshare is a really nice investment in yourself as an artist because there are loads of classes to help you upskill your illustrations and explore your art style. And if you want to try it out and join the class I just showed you, then the first 1000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial. So spend that month participating in classes that will help you level up your commission skills. Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video because it really helps me keep creating. Now let's get back to it. Now decide how much you'll charge. If you find it difficult to price your work, then you are not alone. It's a tricky thing to do because you don't want to undercharge and you don't want to overcharge. 
When you're pricing your commissions, factor in the following four things. How much you want to earn per hour, how long a commission takes you to create, how much value they have to your customer, and also if you have any costs for supplies or shipping if you provide physical commissions. So first you need to figure out how much you need to earn per hour of your time, which is partly a practical question of how much you need to earn to pay your bills depending on your living expenses, and partly a self-worth question of how much you value your art time at. You can then multiply that hourly rate by how long on average the commissions you're offering will take you. This is where it's handy to offer set types of commissions and have examples of them because you probably already have an idea of how long they take you to draw. So from that, you'll now have a minimum amount to charge for your commissions. Charging below that will just be undervaluing yourself. Now also consider the value your commission has to your customer. This might be something you adjust over time as you collect feedback, but if your customer sees value in what you've created way above what you're charging, then factor that in. You might be charging $50 for commissions that your customers see $100 worth of value in. So remember that the value of what you've created isn't just how long you spent on it, it's also the value you're providing through creating something special and personalized for someone with skills you've been practicing for hundreds or maybe even thousands of hours. And now consider any costs associated with creating your commissions and factor that into the price as well. If you're a digital artist, you might not have many costs involved, but if you're a traditional artist, you'll have costs for things like paper or art supplies, and you'll likely need to post your commission to your customer as well, so add the cost of those things into your calculations, or explain to your customer that postage will be extra. So all of those things go into pricing your work, and if you're not sure, then you can always just start somewhere and collect feedback from people to adjust as you go. You can always see what other artists are charging to use as a ballpark, but don't let that sway your minimum that you want to charge for your time. To give you an idea, I started out charging 40 Australian dollars for a single person or pet digital portrait from the waist up, which took me about an hour and a half to make. I just slowly kept raising my prices and now I charge 65 Australian dollars for a single person or pet portrait and people can add an additional person or pet for $20. No doubt I'll raise my prices again as I get more experienced and my style develops, but for now that's a comfortable amount for me to charge. Some people charge way more and that might be appropriate for their time input or their style. So let's get you set up to receive money. Since you're going to be receiving money for your commissions, you need to make sure that you have the business side of things in order so that you can do so legally. Rules are different for every country, so just make sure you look into your country's requirements on money earned through a side job and whether you need to be registered as a business or not. Once that's in order, you'll need to decide how you want customers to pay you, which is totally up to you. You could have an online shop where you list commissions and customers can go there to make their purchase, and this is what I currently do via Etsy. I have a listing with different options where customers can choose how many characters they want drawn, and then I message them directly to collect all the details and reference photos. Or you could do something more direct and invite customers to chat with you via Instagram DMs like I used to do, and then direct them to a payment link when they are ready to pay with something like PayPal. Most payment or e-commerce platforms will understandably charge a fee of some kind for their service, so weigh up the fees to see what's going to work best for you. One thing I do really recommend you consider is requesting payment upfront to protect yourself from people taking advantage of you. I've always requested payment upfront before I start any drawing, and I've never had anyone tell me they weren't okay with that. And just be sure that you're using a reputable system for accepting money, and if people aren't comfortable paying you directly via something like PayPal, they may feel more comfortable paying via an online store. And now it's time to spread the word about your commissions. So you've got the creative skills, an audience to share with, examples of commissions, you know how much you're charging, and you're set up to receive money. Now we just need to tell the world that you're open and available for commissions, so let's spread the word. If you haven't already, tell your audience that you're offering commissions by posting some examples of the commissions you're offering and making it really clear that you're available. Most of my orders in the beginning came from me sharing illustrations of simple character portraits to Instagram and people wanting one personalized to them. You could create some buzz by offering a giveaway of a commission as the prize or run a discount for say the first five orders. 
Put in your social media profile descriptions that you're available for commissions and how to contact you about them. And once you've got a few orders under your belt, ask your customers for feedback and assuming it's positive feedback and keeping their privacy in mind, share that with your audience. Testimonials and positive reviews are something that I know makes me way more likely to purchase from someone. So share with your audience that you have happy customers. And then complete the orders. So once you've got an inquiry or an order about a commission, make sure that your customer knows early on how the process works. So be sure to give them at least the following information. How much the commission costs, what reference photos or details you need from them, how payment works and whether you request payment upfront, when they can expect to receive the commission, and what file sizes or formats they'll receive the commission in. When you're giving an estimate of how long it'll take you to create the commission, be generous so that you have a comfortable amount of time in case you get delayed by something. If you think it'll take a week, say one to two weeks just to be safe. Now you might not get loads of orders straight away. In fact, I find that often when I announce things, the orders slowly trickle in and it might take a little while to get off the ground. But keep practicing, keep showing people the commissions you offer and keep growing your audience to reach new people. And I'm sure you'll be selling commissions in no time. If you're still not getting orders, then ask for feedback or look at what might be preventing people from buying from you. I know that you might be worried that nobody will buy your commissions, but believe in your art Believe in your ability to grow as an artist and put yourself out there because you've got nothing to lose by trying and nobody else is going to do it for you. If you listen to your self-doubt and assume you aren't going to be selling any commissions, then you're guaranteeing that you won't by not taking action. So I know that's been a lot of information, but I hope you found it helpful for your art journey and I hope you make lots of beautiful commissions for people in the future if that's something you've been wanting to do. Thanks so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. It really means the world to me. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.